Good evening, everybody. This is the Town of New Canaan Town Council special meeting Wednesday, March 30th, 2022 at 7, 7.03 p.m. Uh, we are at the town hall and we are you're able to zoom in on the town website if you like. There's a link on the website. You can find that right on the uh, home calendar page. It's meeting ID 842-1004-6647. Uh, first order of business, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <laughs> and welcome back, Penny. Thank you. Hopefully I had good travels. Good to be back. Good. Nice to have you in person. Can you please call the roll? Robin Bates Mason. Here. Rita Patino. Here. Tom Butterworth. Here. Mark Jimsky. Here. Steve Carroll. Here. Luke Coffin. Is he not coming? He's probably on his way. Okay. Mike Morrow. Here. Maria Norton. Here. Kim Norton. Here. Hillary Orman. Here. Christina Ross here. And the young here. And Luke is here. Luke is here now. President okay. Welcome, Luke. We have a full house. Thank you, Penny. And uh, thank you to Robin and Hillary out there for staying home. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping us safe. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, first order of business, uh, public comments. Members of the public are welcome to speak to the town council on the agenda topic scheduled for review and or vote. Speakers are requested to provide their names and street address. Comments will be limited to two to three minutes, subject to total number of speakers. Would anyone from the public like to speak? Uh, seeing no one present, Tucker, is there anybody online who has raised their hand? Okay. We'll move on to the next item, budget update and review. Uh, we, we actually had canceled this meeting uh, because we thought we could get everything done over the last few meetings, but uh, tonight we're just going to do a quick, uh, and we talked about a quick uh, overview of what we've done and where we're going to our vote next Tuesday. So our final vote is next Tuesday evening. I don't expect us to be here very long. I think this meeting maybe would be an hour to an hour and 15 max, um, and we should be able to get through anything we have on our our agenda discussion. So with that, I asked, uh, I asked both Ann and uh, Josh to put together a couple of slides to walk through. They're on your tablets. Um, you can pull up the first slide is, is just the uh, overall agenda. So, I mean, I'm sorry, not the agenda, the budget. So you can take a look at that. And uh, that's under the second tab on your tablet. Okay, so special needs stuff. Yeah, so you'll you'll see that the uh, and you've got the slide up here, but we've we've been past the budget. We've talked about the operating side of the budget, and you know we've talked about that at length. And uh, there's really not a lot. I don't think that you know, the, the board of finance passed us a, a very tight, very clean budget. They had actually eliminated three point eight million dollars out of the budget. Um, we talked a little bit about uh, any other cuts that the operate that to the operating and really didn't come up with anything uh, to speak of. Um, and then we moved on to the uh, bigger issues and bigger capital projects. So if you scroll down underneath the, um, are you, are everybody able to, able to find that? I'm sorry. Yes. Where are you? Where are you? Oh, here on your tablets. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the first, if you go to March 30th. Yeah, where well you go to budget review. So it's right under the agenda. Are you in that? Yeah. You might have to refresh. Had to refresh. You got to refresh because it's 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 been just loaded up. Uh, the one that says for town council. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, that would be the budget. Special meeting got pulled, and then I think there's a new tab. If you refresh. Yeah, just refresh. That happens a lot. Everybody, everybody there. Yep. So the so the first thing you'll see there is the budget, and uh, we walked through that already. Uh, and then you've got your expenditures underneath and then down underneath that is the discussion items that we had highlighted 
uh, over the last couple of meetings. And that's what you see up on the screen there. And Josh, one of the things that we should talk about is the, you want to come, you want to come up or and, and, oh, you're, you got a mic down, you got a mic over there, right? There we go. Okay. Oh, Anna, you, you're out there too, right? I'm out here too. Yeah. Thanks. So one of the things we should talk about is uh, on the capital stuff, we're, we're actually, when we vote the budget in, we talked about this earlier uh, about actual approving of the dollars doesn't happen until it comes back to us. So this is always a bit confusing. So can you just walk us through the process of, of what we are and aren't voting on? I'm sorry, can you just say that one more time? I just want to understand that. So we're, we're approving, when we approve the budget, the operating side of the budget, that's one side of the budget, but the when the capital items that we're, we're talking about, there's still, there's still the uh, possibility that these projects will come back to us for final approval again, or once we approve them, that's it. Well, we see these again. But you'll see them, there'll be an authorization done through legal authorization that has to be done. So these will be approved to move forward to go get their authorization that we have to go through at that stage. But we need the approval first. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So it'll, this will be grouped. These items will be grouped together in a bond resolution. The reason that we're voting on them, though, is that we're we're signaling that these are green lit. Green lit. So you know, once we approve them, that that's pretty much it. And generally, we don't. Uh, you know, it's really just a question of bonding at, at the end of this. So. Uh, that's why we're going to have this discussion and, and uh, we're going to have to indicate that these are either up, an up or a down. So uh, these are the items that, that, we've, that we've taken uh, out of the budget to look at again. Is there anything else that anybody has thought of that, you know, that since we met last time, is there any other items that anybody wants to discuss tonight? Aren't we discussing all these? We are, but I want to make sure I want to have an, I want to have an end to this list. So, you know, um, the question that has come up a lot in emails has been the Vine Cottage. Okay. Is that... Is that so, the, item? so the so are you talking about the painting of the Vine Cottage or painting the painting and repairing the okay. rotted areas that have to be replaced in terms of siding and siding. Yeah. Yeah. So right now, there's nothing in the budget for that. That's what would have to come to back now. to us. So. No, I understand that, but I don't know if we eliminate something if we can substitute with something. No. Else. no okay. okay. So. We so can, when you're saying, is there anything else? Divine Cottage is one of them. Right. Well, that's yeah, but that's down the road. I mean, well, we definitely have our eyes on the Vine Cottage. There's no question about that. But that's going to have to be, live another live for another day. Yeah, else, Maria. So the police department is in the capital and that's for 17 and a half million. So if we vote to approve that amount, what does that mean? Because it's, it's a, it's like more we a don't place. really have a plan yet. So it's a placeholder, uh, an estimate, if you will. It's, it's likely, you know, we, we don't have a plan, but it's likely that it's going to be the estimates that we have are in that neighborhood, you know, possibly a little bit more, but uh, that's a, at least a placeholder that Tiger's had in there for a while. So. And it gives, us, it, just, it gives us the ability, once we have the specifics down, to move ahead with the authorization because you've already approved it to that dollar amount, which obviously we won't need right away. But it gives us the ability to move forward with the program, with the actual project. Can you put Ann back up on the screen? And we wanted to see you while you're talking. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, it, it gives, in having the placeholder there, there, although we don't know the final dollar amount or the, the full scope, um, if approving the dollar amount gives us the ability to go out for the authorization um, once it is trued up and we know all the specifics. So it doesn't hold it up. Um, it just means if it comes in higher, you would then go for another uh, authorization or approval, but it gives us the ability to move forward. Tiger? Hey, you made it there. Yeah, it also signals to the, to the bidders, you know, as we go out to bid that the town is very, you know, it's serious about going forward with the project because a bidder has to put together tens of thousands of dollars worth of work just to bid a project to this size. So, you, so they need kind of a signal from the town that the town is serious, has it funded or, you know, the majority of it funded, depending upon how the final bids come out and that is therefore willing to sharpen their pencil and come forward with their best number. 
it seems to me though we're you're months away from even getting bids, right? You'd have, I mean, we're six months away from getting bids for the project. The, it should be noted in that seventeen and a half million, if the fiscal range, if we decide we're not going to bring forth the fiscal range, have stuff have one of fiscal range somewhere, either with another town sharing one, possibly in town. Um, but two and a half to three million dollars of this having the fiscal range, if we're not going to do it by that. And why is that? Because. I'm sorry to interrupt. Can Kevin come to a microphone, please? Because those of us at home cannot hear what he's saying. I'm sorry that, for thanks, asking sorry. Question, I was just uh, pointing. Sorry. 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 I was just pointing out that in the 17 and a half million is I, I forget the number, Tiger. It's two and a half million dollars. That's for a pistol range, which um, after after having a meeting a week ago with um, Rod Lavieri, Steve, and myself, and John Goodwin, we do not want to bring forth a pistol range at South Avenue. It's just too close to neighbors. It's, it's something that planning and zoning would, would not approve. But we are committed to wanting to have a pistol range for the police somewhere. And we've had discussions. West Cog is working on a regional range. We're not sure we're interested in that with too many other departments. But um, uh, we, we're committed to having a pistol range somewhere for the police, but not at South Avenue. So the the building committee is actually meeting next week, right? Tomorrow. They, oh, tomorrow. Wow. All tomorrow. right. So that, 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 we're going to proceed with the renovation plan. Yeah. We've got a good report from the envelope deep dive that the building itself is a building you want to use to build a new building within it. <coughs> We're going to look at you know, the, the cost of, of tearing it down and building a new building is, is $29 million, something we are very unlikely to want to do. So uh, renovating the current building without the pistol range there would is well within the $17.5 million. And what about, if I may ask, uh, EMS? And putting the services separate from the police. We're not going to have to separate them because you know if, if the police they're connected now. We're putting a new heating system in the uh, in the EMS building. Is anyway we were independent. Independent. But as far as the uh, the uh, telecommunications are connected, the uh, sewer is connected. So we, if we had sold that property to a developer, we might have set, totally separated the EMS building. But we don't have to do that. So air conditioning and heating is going to be independent. The HVAC system, HVAC system for the EMS will be a separate. My understanding was that they are also relying on them for power. No, well, actually, emergency generator, emergency, um, emergency generator only. But yep. we we are looking to separate that out as well. Yeah. Okay. So the money. We're going to have to take down. We're going to vacate the current building while we renovate it for eighteen months. Of course. So whether that power could supply the EMS building, we have to. Um, so whatever costs are involved with the EMS building are calculated into the total price of the project? Tiger, <laughs> how would we answer that? Are they calculated into the price of the project for the police department? Yes. yes. Are you talking, so the, the generator, we actually have a line in, the, in our fiscal 23 budget for a generator for the New Canaan EMS. So they'll be separated. The HVAC system is already going forward. That was in a prior budget. So that's going forward. The only thing that would be left is a sewer line. We're going to disconnect and have a sewer line for each each uh, facility. That is a, that's a nominal cost for us to actually construct a sewer line for the for the EMS building. But at present, we don't see a reason to do that. We're going to have to relay that sewer line anyways for the police department. At that point in time, we can look to sever if we need. I just don't want to see any surprises later on that that's an additional cost to the project. So I'm assuming if it's small enough, it's already included. I mean, as as any project of this magnitude, the council is going to be front and center and get reports the whole way. I mean, yeah, we're going to we're going to hear we're going to hear you know all throughout this whole thing. We'll have the we'll have the, the police full, department full will be coming back to you yeah. for, for yeah. further. I mean, it's going to be a further. I understand, plenty, we're gonna but didn't we plan and approve the fields, and then we got hit with an additional appropriation? I'm just being realistic. We have nothing in paper. This is just an estimate. So you, you have to assume that it's going to come in higher. Uh, it may come in higher. It may come in higher. Yeah. Because of inflation. The materials world has changed yeah. significantly. So unless that changes, we're going to come in higher. But the actual the actual nuts and bolts of the project we haven't even seen yet. So I mean they're they're, they're, yeah. so, right. they're, they're talking about they're talking about accomplishing them if we haven't seen what the right. budget yeah, I feel like we need to see the. Project okay, we, we debated whether to pull it out entirely. That would have sent the signal we're not committed to the police department. It's it's a signal that we are committed to doing the police department. 
if we have to come back for more, more, more money, we will. We are committed to redoing the police department. Well, not, not, only, not only are we committed to doing the police department, but this is like, I don't, we have never really discussed in public the fact that the whole idea of moving the station and studying all this stuff, we finally put the flag in the ground. It's staying where it is. I mean, that's, this is, this is great news. I mean, it's, I, I think it's fantastic know. news. And I think we, we were in the why when we discussed this. Um, well, again, my, my preference would be a new building. I've said that all along. Yeah. This new report uh, gives me the confidence that you can do a 196 year old building and make it last for another eight. And I'm a thousand percent supportive, yeah. but I'm, I'm always about how do we get to this decision and what is this accomplishing, right? So I'm saying that I'm full support. I, I think that all of the, the, the renovations and then the dollars spent are adequately and appropriately positioned uh, to support the town, but how do you how do you how do you vote what on is the this number? doing what yeah. are we doing so, here today so we're Yay, safe, 17 we're, and then okay well, no, it's 25 or 29 or that could be said about any project you know when by the by the time the bond resolution comes if you don't want to do the if the board of finance for the town council doesn't want to approve the bond authorization there's no project yeah we kill it <laughs> this is still at, you, we haven't i mean to give you an example we haven't even hired, we haven't even hired the architect yet to do the plans for the right, building right. I mean, so what is, is yeah. this approval accomplishing right. it, it signals that we are going to do it okay yeah great. that's really that's but why wouldn't you just approve enough to hire the architect and you know like Again, I'm in 400,000. We could have done that. No, I'm in we support. I'm that. just saying, yeah. I, I'm yeah. trying to understand I, yeah, uh, the, the, the logistic point. aspect of step-by-step -step process of what is this accomplishing here, saying we're okay with this, because I'm in full support. Kevin, you know I'm in full support. And I think we, we discussed a couple different options that I think were, were great options for the, for the town. And this is an amazing initiative, but what this is actually accomplishing. In the past, we have appropriated funds to do the architectural drawings from schematics through, and we got some input and then voted on the monies for the project. I don't understand why we're moving to appropriate all the monies for the project that are estimated in any case. In the, in the past, we've done both, Christina. We've yeah. done it where it's been a two phase and we've done it where it's been an entire one phase operation. So in essence, this is a two phase operation since you did some of the engineering already, but now we're trying to move forward, A, finish, have enough money to, for the architecture, and then two, to signal to the bidder that we're actually very, you know, very aware and very behind the project. You're correct. We don't know. We have estimates from two architects that we're in the ballpark at $17.5 million. We're in the ballpark, but we're also in uncharted times. So it could be higher, could be lower. We don't know. The keep them on this is a couple of years out. So it's also, that's got to be taken into consideration as well. But the board it is like a bidder and it, and it allows us the, enough monies to hire the architect in full and go forward with the project. I still think we need to approve the monies for design and contract documents. And then later mm -hmm. on, know what we're voting on. Well, look, at we can't go forward without a bond resolution. Right. The board of selectmen approved $10 million for this year and seven million, and we're going to do $7 million next year. Then we decided that after talking to bond council, they said, you either have a project or you don't. We do have a project. We don't know exactly what it's going to cost. We do know now pulling the pistol range out of there that the building itself won't, won't be over $17.5 million. I have a question. Is there a reason we can't do a special appropriation that if we've never seen the plans? I mean, I'm fully in support of the that. project. Yeah, again, there's, there's not, there's not one way to do it. We could have just said we're not even going to put the so any of the money for the police department in the, in the budget at all, other than perhaps a million dollars for, for the design work. But, uh, but if, so here's, here's my answer to this. I've, and Penny can back me up on this. I've looked at that police station placeholder for way too long. It has been in our capital plans and been pushed out time and time and time again. We're not, we're not, we're approving this and putting, we're putting that 17 and a half million dollars as a, as a big placeholder on the ledger sheet for sure, we are doing this project no matter what. It may come in at 16 million, it may come in at 20 million, but we, that 17 and a half million says to the PD, we are doing this and we're doing it now. I think if we appropriate a million to do the construction documents, it says the same thing. Not a, it doesn't make the same kind of statement, Christine. I disagree. I, I think you know, you're, you're talking about you know, they, they've been pushed aside so many times that this tells them that we are doing it and doing it now. I mean, that's, that's this is a broader know. point that I have just 
about the overall process and being involved in this like five times already. The process itself seems to be, it has a defect because in reality it should be, here's the plan and here's our vendors and here's our material, here's the cost. We, I'm talking about, it isn't just the police building, I'm talking about any project, mm -hmm. planetariums, fitness centers, you name it. Here's the plan, town council. It's gonna cost us, you know, $5 million to do this. Here's exhibit A through Z. I'm gonna go right through the vendors and going right through the material. Now, here's the package, okay? It's vetted out. You wanna ask me questions, ask me questions. Now, uh, can we get, can you authorize the bond, <clears throat> right? That's how I think the process should work. It doesn't work that way. It's too, we're on this season, we're, we're past that, correcting it, okay? So we, we have to move forward on things, but I'm saying, it's better, and I'm hearing it now more than I've ever heard, present a plan. Well, I'm looking at you, Kevin. It's like accusatory. I'm just saying. No, no, keep in mind, Michael, Here's this, this project is, has been in the works for more than a year. We, we didn't know which direction we were going, a renovation or a new building, right? They were significantly different cost, and whether a pistol range is even in there. Right. So, you know, it happened to be concurrently with the budget process. We could have said we're going to wait to April after the budget's done, and then we'll talk, start talking about police again. But the project is, has been in motion. But right now, I, I get all that. I'm saying I'm, I'm addressing, a, I think, a deep structural flaw. <laughs> because, like, look, if you want to get a kitchen renovated in your house, you interview a couple of contractors, none of them walk in and say, give me 100 grand, uh, prove that for me, and then I'm going to give you a design. But no, you give me your different plans, and I'll tell you how much I'm going to pay. And you know, I see it no different. Than you that. sit on the building committee. We've been debating whether to build a new building or whether to renovate. Kevin, I'm not saying the merits of the police building. Right. I think it, for at this point of where we are in the police building, we're past my criticism. I'm just saying moving forward, and I think I'm hearing it more now than ever, come up with us to us and say, here's the bill. Now give us the money for it. Not this idea of what we kind of think it's going to be. We have to, we have to put together enough capital projects to be able to do an annual bond offering, right? That's why we go through this process. We know what we want, we're going to want to bond later in the year. Right. So we want to have 12 or $14 million. That's why some of these are bigger than normal, right? We could have pulled it out and done a special appropriation. And then we, and we don't necessarily bond it, you know, all anyway. So, at the time, we will we'll, we'll probably split this into two because it's going to be a two or three year project by the time it gets done. So here's a perfect example. <clears throat> Some of the Tiger's capital, right? He's like, I needed two low boys, right? I need a mower. This is what they cost. OK, great. Here's your easy, money. easy. Yeah. OK, well, that's to me no different than you know, any of these other projects. We've priced it, priced it out. Here is the price. Here's my design plan. This is why my material cost, cost, time and material, right? Here's my time and material. Here's my stamped engineering plans. This is what it costs. Town council, you need to approve this money. I and mean, you better do it quick because I have to get on, on top of this. We, that's not the I'm saying <coughs> general broad scope here is that's what I think would be much more beneficial for, at least in my perspective, for when we're being asked for X millions of dollars to bond. We know exactly what we're bonding versus, well, this is an estimate. Could be more, could be less. And I just... Because we're spending the taxpayer money. Like this is an individual personality thing. Like the taxpayers are looking at this saying, and I get it. I have people come up to me saying, how much are we spending for an elevator at Waveney? You know, how much is this going to cost? What are we doing here? So it's just the general, I think, a structural flaw in the process that maybe we can work you know, on a going forward basis. That maybe that's something we could we could work better with in moving forward. But I think that, with the, that with actually the, is, with is, a fifth, with that, a vehicle versus a $20 million building, I have to, you, they have <laughs> to be, right? yeah. sorry, Penny, <laughs> Penny, you're up next. He's been trying to Penny, then Rita, people. go ahead, go ahead, <laughs> Penny, you're up. <laughs> actually, Mike, the, that is actually the, a point that I was going to suggest, that if we are finding the process has some flaws in it, in our mindset, uh, perhaps not having the numbers in a specific plan, then let's go after budget season and go through our policies and procedures and make sure that we understand the policy. Um, Tiger, you've, you've outlined what the approval processes are you know, throughout each of a, a project. So let us, after the budget season, since we're having some questions about this, move forward with finalizing and you know, um, making a structure here. I think also putting the 17 and a half million in this budget, says something to the Board of Finance also, that it's not just a placeholder of a million 
in their long list of all the projects that everybody's going to want to have done, but 17 and a half of it at least is out of a discussion. You know, what do we have? 28, 29 million. You can take that 17 out, you know, over <coughs> the course of years and know that that's going to be for the police building. No more discussion. Can I say something? Oh, Rita's, um, up. Rita's up next. Okay. Yeah, I would just, I mean, so ideally, I agree with you, Mike. I think it's great to have all the costs up front and perfect. I think it, just, it also just depends on the project itself and the timing, because to your, you know, your example of um, when you put your, you know, kitchen renovation out to bid, sometimes you just know you're going to do it and you want to set aside for planning purposes, a chunk of money that you're going to use, that you know, you're going to use it later on. And I think this is one of those cases where you know, you're, we're, we're for planning purposes and for setting an expectation and for like, you know, making a, a, you know, a stake, putting a stake in the ground and saying, we're going to do this. I, I think it. this instance requires, like, I, I think, I think it makes sense to do it. Yeah. Thank you. Steve. That's what I said. Tom. So yes, I, I've, I've watched this process without great understanding because I'm not an expert. I don't sit on the infrastructure committees, but it's a constant frustration. You know, every time we vote on something, we would really like to know the ultimate cost. But in this example, we don't even have a design. I mean, yes, we could do Christina's, you know, approach of wait, let's get the design and then start the process there. But the point is that when we authorize the 17 million, we're not committing to anything. You know, we don't have a design. We don't have a cost structure. We're not obligated. We're not empowering somebody to spend our money for us. We're just saying that we're just saying this is how we want to frame the project. That's all we're doing, and it, it's what the board of finance decided that was the right approach. And uh, we have a rough design. You, you've seen the, what the building committee has seen. So once you decide to renovate, we know what roughly what. But is it a design that you would yeah. drive cost specific cost estimates? No contractor is going to bid on a rough design. So, right. but we but we have we have both architects gave us cost estimates based upon their designs. And both have been in this ballpark figure. That's that's what we're coming from. Is that estimate of construction at present? We don't have a defined estimate of construction because we don't have a bid. Problem that we have with with the process that you're asking for is that a lot of bidders are not going to come to the table if we don't have the money, right? They're they're not going to put in the effort, or they're not going to put in the effort that we want them to put in. Where they're going to sharpen their pencil and want the project? They'll take the project at a half a million dollars over cost because they didn't even bother to look at it without the money being behind it. So you, you are right, it's a little difficult, but it, it, we also go by, you know, every single time we come to you for a request, we've either gone to a contractor and tried to get a ballpark figure, gone to a vendor and asked for a quote, but not a, you know, we can't ask them for a hard quote, we gotta ask them for a soft quote, right? So we have a ballpark figure as to what that number is gonna be. Here we asked two architects to give us their estimate of construction and they're both within this range. So we're, we're close. Oh, yeah. Tiger, that's why I have more confidence with the police department building. I have problems with these other items where we don't have that type of diligence, at least that diligence. We, you know, we have some level on, on the police building and I sit on the police building committee. So, you know, again, my Which, comment is more designed for, you know, on a, on a prospective basis, but some of these other projects that were before us, you know, now, I mean, I have more concern because I'm like, I don't really know if these are, like, where are these costs coming from? Which well, I can tell you that each of the ones that we've given you have either been spoken to by a vendor or we've estimated based upon previous costs that we have, the previous projects that we've done. So, and costs associated with that. So, even you know, all, all the ones that are in front of you that you see, those were, you know, they're, they're not where we just pulled a number. We pulled a number based upon contractor discussion, vendor discussion, previous project that, uh, that we had done, and then we could then estimate the cost going forward. Thanks, Tiger. Yeah. Uh, you're oh, Kim's up next. Yeah. Kim. Hi, I just want to follow up on what Mike said and respond to some of the comments. Um, first of all, I'm fully in support of the police department. Um, my neighbors are very happy. Everyone's happy that it's staying in place and it's preserving the facade of the building, which I think is great. Um, I think there's been so much confusion over where the police department is going to be. I think it, it, the public and the town council um, should have a presentation on what is going to be involved and be a lot more clear um, <clears throat> on what the plans are. And I think it's kind of putting the cart before the horse. I don't feel comfortable giving a blank check um, 
to um, for the project, not because I don't support it, just because I don't feel comfortable with it. And I think that goes for the other items as well. Um, I think that it can be a special appropriation. I think that we could put money in to show good faith that we want to go ahead with the project and we have a AAA bond rating. I think we're good for it. I don't think that we're going to turn off contractors by not appropriating the money. So I, I don't, uh, as much as I respect that point of view, I, I don't think it's necessary to, um, to give the full appropriation at this time. Well, you'll, you'll have, you'll, I'm sorry. Uh, all right, uh, Hillary. Hi, it's, I, is there confusion? I mean, I, maybe I'm confused. We're not actually appropriating $17 million in taxpayer money right now. It's, it's, a, it's literally like we would commit this money if we were to take out a bond, but there's not a dollar of taxpayer money going towards this right now. Am I am I wrong? I'm, That's I'm correct. Kind of, That's so correct. It's, and it's and not, o, not only that, Hillary, but we we would fully expect to hear several reports from the police police building committee, like we've done with every building project that we've ever done in this town. That's right. why we have a building committee in place. Right. And you're, you're going to hear more about this building than you'll ever want to know. You'll know every every rafter in that building. You know, right. when we're done, we'll know what every dollar is going toward. You know, and and we've seen this over the years. It'll be hours and hours of presentations and meetings on this building. Right. You so have, there's you'll have you'll have a ton of time to weigh in on this. Right. So there. I just want to be clear though, because I I feel like we're we're mixed. Like there might be some mixing up of words here, because my understanding is that there's no appropriation, so to speak. This is literally a number put in, to as a signal of what we might bond out. But at this point, there's not a dollar of taxpayer money right now, except for what's already been spent on consultants and things like that to, to put together um, the research that Kevin's had done and that the, the police um, committee has, has had done. But, but this is literally what we might bond to build this building. This is not an Correct. appropriation as of now. And you no money is being appropriated. Is that right, Kevin? Sorry. We still have four hundred thousand dollars left of the way appropriated previously to study the, doing the police department. So thank you for clearing that up. Yeah, I think that's an important point. Thank you, so, Maria. So to me, I'm me. I don't know a lot about bonds, but it sounds like a credit card limit. Like we're we're getting a a limit that we may spend, but we're not. Are we not laying out anything until we actually do use the money? Right. Correct. So it's the spending part that I, I feel like will someone come to the town council for what amount? Like at what amount do they come to the town? We will council come for a bond resolution, appropriation and bond resolution authorizing the money to be spent for the project and to bond the money. And that's the that's the that always last, comes as a bond but resolution. That's the last step in the process. We're gonna have presentations of what it's gonna yeah. look like, yeah. what it'll be. We'll have we'll have public hearings. The public will come and speak about are they for it or are they against it. I mean, you're going to have all those, and that could be in a, put to referendum. All those meetings to look forward to. And do we lower the amount since the gun range is out, or is that? Well, we we still want to do a gun range. It's just not going to be there. But I'm just saying. But if this on the line it says police station, now gun range is now a different project. <laughs> well, again. <laughs> We're committed to doing the the police whatever is necessary to get it, get the building done and uh, and, and get them a, a, an appropriate training facility. Being new and uh, appreciate everyone's time and, and efforts and communication, uh, Kevin, Steve, uh, <clears throat> greatly appreciated. Uh, maybe just not understanding the process, uh, and I'm not sure if anyone else is in the same boat as me. Is just uh, understanding that we're not really. A, proving or doing anything it's just signaling that this is our intention uh and the numbers can move up or down depending on the cost but this is what we want to do rather than <clears throat> uh saying hey we're going to approve this small portion to get uh the blueprints or whatever for the architect and th that's what i was just uh, indicating initially and I, I think it was in the beginning of this conversation was what is the intent? I say, what is the, what is the objective? What is the intent here? And the I guess the objective and the we could have we could have pulled this out and said we're going to come up with a special appropriation in June or July, right? We decided, we debated that, right? We, we actually had ten million to seven million, and we decided 
Board of Finance decided we want to show the commitment to the project. Again, Kevin, you know, I'm a big supporter. We yeah. had a conversation personally about this and, uh, and I'm a big supporter. I want to go on record about that, but just want to understand the time and, and what are the events of how we get there. So saying it's 17, it's just really a placeholder that the, the it's the- well, It's more than that. It's, it's a signal we're going to do the project. It's an intent that we're doing, we yeah. are doing the project. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we are we are going to raise our hands and vote the fact that we are 100% behind getting this done. And we're not just approving some architect plans that may or may not happen. We're approving and we want this to happen. Committed. And we're committed to have it happen. Okay. Now, that said, Understood. are we going to scrutinize the budget and the architect fees and all the stuff that goes into this? Of course we are. And so is the building committee. And so is the board of finance and the board of selectmen. And we're going to go through this with a fine tooth comb. And to Mike's point, I get that. I, I get the fact that, and, and Mike is making a great point, is it, it would be nice if we had a $17,542.72 budget that we could look at. I get that. I mean, and I, and I respect that opinion tremendously, but that's, that's not what we're doing tonight. Tonight, we're just putting that stake in the ground saying, we support this. We are not going to let any other big project in this town leapfrog over this project again and this is it this is our moment that we're saying we're doing this so that's that's what robin, robin has her hand up sorry robin uh no sorry i was just going to say this is just you know a place marker and i mean it would have to go to the board of finance for the bond issue as well before it came to the town council so they would vote it on it and then we would vote on it right correct yeah yeah, so I don't see the issue, and I think it's important that we, I mean, if you, everyone in town council who toured the police station, I think we have to show the police that we're committed to this. I mean, you go down into that break room, it was, you know, horrible, and everything, I mean, I, I just I just think it's a no-brainer. I think we vote for it, and, and if we see problems, we just don't vote for the bond issuance. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I and what I'm hearing tonight is every single person here is behind it. I mean, no one's saying they're not behind doing this. It's just a matter of how we're doing it. And it's a process issue. And, and I think just full circle back to Penny's point, we can look at this. And, and I talked to uh, Rita and others earlier about, um, you know, when we talk about a certain, how does, a, how does an item get onto our list here? And how does it pri get prioritized? And, you know, we use some of the examples of projects that get, got here this year, and we're seeing them for the first time. <laughs> if we, we, we should have, and this is something we'll tackle in a future meeting under general government, a, a priority list of say five items, you have to click every single one of these items to make it onto this capital list. It's gotta be a safety issue, or it's gotta be on the list for over a year, or it's gotta be, you know, uh, used by a lot of people in town or a taxpayer, whatever the, whatever the parameters are to make these lists and to, to be able to, you know, percolate to the top. This is, the, the, we need to have something in writing so that everybody can go by this, in sort of these guidelines. So we'll work on that. Uh, so I wanna, I wanna actually move on here because it's already 20 of eight. So uh, we need, can we get that next slide up after the, after the to-do list? No, Josh, I, I'd like to make one more comment yeah, in response to Mike. You know, until last week, I was I, I was expecting, I was hoping myself we would bring be, uh, forth a $21 million new building with a net of selling the property, which would have been a different transaction, right? We decided last week we're not going to do that. We're going to renovate. We're going to move out for 18 months, which is going to cost a million and a half dollars to operate a police department while, while we're not there. So there's soft costs in here, as well as the hard cost of renovating. So, And we're building a new building within a building. So we'll have it for 80 to 100 years. Well, this appropriation, if I may, has to be with the building staying in place. Correct. And, you know, like I said earlier, this is great news. I mean, this is like the first time we've, anybody's talked about this as far as keeping it. This is official. This is what they're studying. This is, you know, it's going to stay where it is. I mean, it's, it's what we all talked about wanting to happen. And now we got to the point where it is happening. So um, I think it's really good. News. Good. Let's go. Uh, Josh, can you go up to the next slide? Not that slide, the next one up. We want to talk about the impact of of some of this stuff to the, uh, the number one. Yeah, there you go. So, Anne, maybe you could walk us through this slide. And it's on our tablet. And it's on the tablet. Could you just, I, I asked you to prepare something that would show if we eliminated or, or kicked the can down the road. What does that do? And I think this is important for, for, uh, everyone, including the new new folks, to really understand the impact of some of this stuff. So, can you walk us through this slide? Sure. 
So we, we took what the five-year capital plan is currently right now, the bonded five-year capital plan, and put it in on the top section where it says current, and we placed it in there. And as you're going through your discussion right now, as you can imagine, the five-year operating plan is an approval document. It's not the bonded document. So then we have to work out of all those projects, what are 10, 5, 10, 15, and 20-year projects and do the estimated cost going forward. So we took the five-year operating plan, worked through what projects we think would be done when, and when we would bond for that money. We typically do um, reimbursement. So each, you'll see the new debt based on, and although the, the police station we have is a 17.5, the police station is within these numbers because it's in tranches right now. But uh, that'll be looked at differently from different uh, bonding options. Then we brought forward what the principal, the new principal, estimated principal and interest would be each year with the five-year capital plan as it stands. And as you can see, our current year um, of the 722, 400 is what we would have been paying anyway because that's current debt that we owe, current debt and interest that we owe. With the current projects at 12 million as new debt, we typically bond in September, which means it's only six months worth of interest. So the interest for fiscal year 23, additional interest will be about $323,000 on the $12 million in project. Where the change happens on that 12 million, your principal is not paid until fiscal year 24. That's how our mechanism is currently set up in bonding in September. So Although it's going up in fiscal year 24, it's going up another 500,000. You're bonding, you're bonding another 15 million, but you're paying the principal from what came over from 23 into 24. Hopefully I'm saying it the right way. And in 24, some debt is coming down. So the net effect of adding new debt and the debt coming off is an increase of 500,000. And that's how each year is worked down. And as you can see, fiscal year 26 is a huge decrease because we have two significant refundings dropping off between 25 and 26. So what the goal is, as it currently stands with the police station, we would look to say, how can we make the best of where our debt falls out so that the increases are spread more evenly as opposed to having this massive drop. In the second schedule, where we say the cuts, that's based on the projects that were in the list before, the playhouse, the uh, playground, or when all these projects, taking them out of this year of 23 and moving them into 24. And as you can see, the differential change is going from an increase of 722 to 648 in interest, um, a $74,000 difference. And again, your principal and how it works changes because when you bond, the principal actually doesn't happen until two fiscal years. So it slightly changes with a net effect over the next three years of $13,000 um, in putting off those previous projects into another year. So I'll open up, I kind of threw out a lot there. So I'll open up for questions on it. Yeah, so questions, guys. I, I think I, there was a, uh, she had a bar graph uh, that shows the, the, um, the oh, oh, yeah, overall debt uh, falling off. And it just, I talked to Josh about this. It's, it was very hard to read, you know, any kind of detail to it. And it was just a bunch of, bunch of bar graphs. So this is a lot, uh, to me, this is a lot easier to read, but, you know, Mark. The interest rates that we're assuming on future debt, is that calculated in there? They are. I, I talked to our, this was a couple of, about a week or two ago, I talked to our um, financial advisor when we do the bonding and he gave me a couple of rates because I asked him to give me 10, 50, you know, 10 and 20 really to, to not to get too specific with five and 15. Um, so we could build out for the next, you know, five, six years. Um, I asked him also in regards to, you know, the thought process was, well, the police station is a large number, our debt the interest rates are low. Why don't we start trying to see if we can do that sometime this year or next year? But, you know, in talking with him, um, the interest rates he's saying have already changed. They've gone 100 to 120 basis point changes from what people thought even last year um, in this quarter. So he said the change is already happening. Um, and looking at the change in interest rate, whether we should bond more now versus later, 
the tax implication is so much higher on the taxpayer um, in trying to just push that forward. And the benefit, the benefit is more on the taxpayer to, to even it out versus trying to bond quicker um, because the rates are changing so much. Um, so we have built in higher rate, rates going out. Um, hi, Anne, this is Kim Norton. I have a question about the interest over five years. If you were to add up those columns, is that around $20 million? Is that what we're paying over five years? Uh, offhand, yes. Yes, in interest. And then that chart that you have to the right that says fiscal year 23, 74,000, what does that chart represent? That, well, that chart just shows you that because of the question came up on those previous projects, what, what would the effect of pulling those projects out in 23 and moving them to 24? What effect would they have on our budget? Okay, thank you. Yeah. So that, that would be the change where we decrease 74,000 in this year's budget, but increase next year 100 and, uh, I'm sorry, decrease 109 next year. The reason we asked that question is because I, there, there wasn't a lot of pushback to the point where folks said, I don't think we should do these projects. You know, they, everybody sort of signaled that they want to do the projects, but they may not want to do them this year, I think was, was my takeaway. But I wanted to illustrate if we do punt, you know, that's the, the, these are the numbers that we need to consider. I thought the impact might be a little bit more than the 13,000 in terms of overall. Uh, but, you know, you're talking about, also you're talking about the potential of increased cost of these projects too, which is very, very likely. So that has to be talked about as well. Mark. You know, I think, you know, what I struggle with when I look at all of these things is what the debate is whether or not we're ever going to do them versus yeah. kicking them down the road because there's a cost of inaction. I know we want to hire consultants and look back at ways to where we can spend money. Every time we, we kick the can down the road, there's an incremental cost. And I think it's greater now than it's ever been. Police station is probably a great example. I mean, in hindsight, if we had done it three years ago, it'd probably be $3 million less, but we're not going to look back and say, Ooh, we could have saved the town $3 million. So I think for me with these projects is we either aren't going to do them or we have to do them now because our finance costs and our costs on materials and everything else are going to go up. So, I mean, to me, that's the, what I struggle with, which yeah. is, um, kicking the can down the road just doesn't make economic sense to me because it, it's going to be a greater burden on the taxpayer in the future. Steve, I'd like one, one comment. When you look at the five-year capital plan, a lot of those numbers are high numbers, right? It's from the, mainly from the facilities due as to what, you know, projected capital maintenance things are going to be. So there's not many new projects in there. It's kind of, but, you know, with, you know, expected vehicles, expected, you know, but it's, those are pretty inflated numbers overall. We, we, we err on the side of inflating numbers on the out years. Yeah. yeah. Questions? I can't see, I can't see Hillary or Robin out there. You guys have any questions? No, all good. No, I'm good right now. Thank you. So, and that was a very, that's a, I know that was a lot of work and I, I really appreciate that. It's very helpful. Uh, I have to see if I could just say I have to give um, credit to Josh too. He um, really pulled it together today too as well. So I need to say thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> All right. So, you know, on uh, that's our segue as we get toward eight o'clock here. You know, if these projects are going to live, we all need to basically signal that we are, we don't want to wait for inflation and we don't want to, you know, we don't want to kick this down the road or we do. So um, now is the time to talk about any of these projects that you feel strongly that we shouldn't do um, this year or that, you know, I, I don't see costs of any of these things going down. So, you know, I think we're going to have to make a really strong point to kill it, to kill it rather than uh, kick it. So does anybody want to talk about killing any of these projects? Wave any house. You want me to elaborate? Hey, you got you to make your point, Christina, because okay. it's, you know, I, you know, so this in, is looking, be a tough sale. in looking at Waveney House, uh, the approval request is to put in the handicapped bathrooms, but the handicapped bathrooms are designed to go on the second floor. There is no upgrade on the bathrooms that are there now on the first floor, except for a column in the woman's room. Everything else stays the same. 
I don't see how that upgrades anything. And we don't have an elevator to get to the second floor. So I think we're putting the cart before the horse. And the elevator, there's a great concern because we want to make this a destination place. And you are putting an elevator exactly where the staircase well is, which blocks the view and really place. it what? <laughs> it it this it it takes the enchantment that everybody has talked about out of the equation. And I just don't see why an improvement needs to downgrade rather than upgrade the facility. So I think that this the second floor bathrooms need to be re consider and the elevator has to go in the building but it needs to be put in the best place possible so those two things plus when the architect was at the meetings with the construction committee or the advisory committee she was specifically requested to make sure that the design of the bathrooms were of a level equal to a country club or a facility and after looking at the drawings and looking at the design I'm going to say it doesn't merit the money that is being requested. And I'm really concerned about it. If we're going to do this, let's do it right. But this is not right for me. So I'm not. So Tiger and I make a few comments. Yeah. First of all, we have an asset that's worth probably $25 million, right? The American with Disability Act was passed in 1991. We have no exemptions from the, right? So, and we, we use that building with sometimes two or 300 people in the building. And we have to have bathrooms for a, for a institutional use, not the seven bathrooms that are in, was in a private residence. We could spend the money to, you know, renovate all those seven bathrooms. That would be kind of silly because we, it's an institutional building now. We have to have bathrooms for the future of that building. And we can get by with accommodations for, for the second floor as, we, as we're allowed to. We, we can make, you know, if, if people can't meet upstairs, we'll meet with them downstairs, that kind of thing. But we, we have to eventually put an elevator in that building. We have to be working toward that. So. ADA is not optional. We have to be working toward it or we're going to get sued by the federal government. We're not, we're not talk, I'm not talking about that. Yeah. I'm talking about the placement of the elevator is totally wrong. You know, and the bathroom's we had, we, on the we, second we, floor. Christina, you know, we had a committee that, is, that reviewed that with seven, five locations, six locations. It's on it. So, and you were on the committee. Uh, I forget how you voted, but the reality is we have to put an elevator in that building and that, this committee decided that's the best location for it. So... The committee was disbanded long before the plans were done. Well, the committee, again, the committee came up with that conclusion. I mean, you could put a, an elevator on the outside of the building. and make it back. You can put an elevator in a different location on the first floor. There were options given. Again, Christina, you were on that committee. The committee decided. So, so the Tiger, just on the, on this, um, the actual use of the 990,000. 900, 900, Can you just review one more time what's in that number? That's for that's for upgrading the bathrooms on the second floor. Um, that includes a contingency number, right? So that was a bid number at the time that we went out to bid, right? We had to adjust it based upon time, spent a year plus, and we had to adjust it due to material procurement. So we went back to the contractor, asked for those adjustments, and then added a contingency on, on top of it. And this was the 990 number. Now we could have done both phases together, the elevator and the bathrooms, but we were trying to phase out the work so that we weren't hitting, you know, we were trying to normalize or equalize what requests were from budget year to budget year. The, uh, the committee met for a long period of time about these items. We met with the, the State Historic Preservation Office. They were very much in favor of, of the renovations on the second floor for the bathroom and what we were trying to accomplish and how we were trying to accomplish it. They were in favor of the placement of the elevator. The committee voted. The committee was in favor of it. And we went forward with the project. You know, the, the, problem, that we had, the problem that we had is phasing. So you could phase the elevator first. But again, we were trying to, trying to work our way through the entire process. We felt that the next phase would be to put the bathrooms in. They were always in the second phase and we just switched the first and the third phases. Thank you. You're welcome. I'd like to say something, please. Sure. When, when the building committee or the advisory committee was disbanded, they were still talking about a lift. It was later found that they were gonna okay. cut the concrete and put a regular elevator called a cage. Then now it's a solid elevator blocking the entire staircase. That was not what the preservationist or 
the building code consultant had that's, that's had not presented. that's not being before you tonight the elevator is going to be next year and we can talk about the elevator further but right now if we don't move on with the bathrooms right we're, but nobody can get to them so it's an ada 97 percent of the people can get to them right Dude. ATA people cannot. Handicapped people cannot get up to the second there, floor. There are bathrooms on the first floor, right? So it's not, it's not as other. So, but if you're gonna, There's if you're no gonna, idea. in today's world, if you're gonna put bathrooms in, they've got to be ADA. So yeah. it's just, it, you know, we're again, we're we're taking bites out of this giant apple of waving ass. Right. You know, slowly we're gonna make this right. But it's either we spend 13, 14, 15, or 20 million, whatever that number is, at once, or we just do it in pieces. And then we decided to do it in pieces a few years ago. And this is one piece of this, one piece of the puzzle. We did the roof, we did the windows, we did the, you know, the, the list goes on and on. So- You should look at the design drawings. Happy to. The elevator's not before you tonight. And, I mean, and the, elevator, gonna... the elevator will be a, the elevator will be a discussion. There's no question about it because the bathrooms don't affect the look of the, the overall look of the building. I believe the elevator is a bigger debate and that should be discussed in public and we should have a lot of input there because that change, that'll change the look of the building. For it sure. does affect it because the existing bathrooms are not being upgraded. That could be done down the road. Nice Go ahead, Penny. Um, I actually served on that 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 uh, committee as well, and um, the committee did decide on the design of the elevator uh, and the location of it. Um, uh, there was only one member of the committee who was not in favor of the elevator, and that was Christina. And consequently, you're, you know, uh, positioning um, as it stands right now. Um, I actually was surprised that we weren't going to push both of those phases in at the same time because we delayed a little because of COVID. Um, and I would hope that the elevator design uh, specifications would move forward because there is a delivery um, lag to it. Uh, so we don't want to be deciding that right now, next year, you know, at this time next year for them to have the, what was it, six months uh, of Tiger to, to get the elevator, you know, so I think we they're need custom to be, made. Mm -hmm. they're, they are custom made. I know they are custom made and, and we went through designs that were looking like birdcage elevators that you find in a, you know, British um, hotel or a more sleek design one that actually I thought kind of disappeared um, from a competing design standpoint um, in that stairwell. But that was the only location that could go right straight up. Um, that was decided by the preservation state guy, you know, but. Um, Steve. Go ahead. Just real quick, um, I observed a few meetings of that committee and, and looked at the looked at the plans um, thoroughly, and I was left with absolutely no question in my mind that this was the best location for the elevator. That was just not even a question. I, I think that this issue of bifurcating, yes, it would be cleaner if we did them all at once. If we did the whole thing at once, if we had chosen the elevator first, then the dialogue tonight would be what goods an elevator. Yeah, if you, what's the point of an elevator if able if ever if able if able bodied people can go to the bathroom downstairs? So you know, by bifurcating it, you create the appearance of, of disorder. But ten years from now, five years, ten years, twenty years from now, you're going to look back and say, "Hey, we have it all. We just happened in that first year to do some phasing. It doesn't. You don't have to get to the home run on the first pitch." Thank you. Can I say something? Uh, Kevin. Um, so I wasn't on the committee. I wasn't on town council when the committee was formed. I mean, I just feel like this is another example of something happening without us seeing the plans. So um, I, with, you know, it sounds like you put a lot of work into it. And I think that's, that, thank you for doing that. But I certainly think it's worth reconsidering. Maybe there's a better plan, but I don't understand why the bathrooms are on the second floor. There's bathrooms on the first floor. I've given lots of parties at Waveney. I don't understand why those bathrooms can't be made ADA compliant or why there can't be space on the first floor found for ADA bathrooms, why they have to be. I mean, I've been up on the second floor. It's a, it's a beautiful space. 
and there's a lot of rooms up there that can be used for different things. So then, then that goes back to the point of what is the use of Waveney, which is a kind of an existential question for the town. But, um, you know, so I think it's worth reconsidering and, and I think it's hard for us to vote on something that we've never seen the plans. Bathrooms are on the second floor because there's no space on the first floor to expand the bathrooms. The, where the women's bathroom is right now actually would require significant <clears throat> ramping because it's down one, two, three steps. So it's not on the same level as you know the, the main floor. And where the men's bathrooms are, there's not enough space to uh, expand it to um, make larger bathrooms. Without screwing up the historical integrity right. of the building. You're gonna be, you know, getting into interrupting the, the paneling and those sorts of things. It so those kinds of considerations actually, you know, were discussed. Um, and we made the whole first floor ADA compliant this past year. But doesn't the second floor have historical integrity too? I mean, the rooms and the views and whatever and making that into a bathroom takes away the, the We're use not of the second about floor. Moving walls. We're, right. Uh, downstairs, downstairs, you'd have to, downstairs, downstairs, you'd have, you'd have to, move to move the walls. Significant walls. Right. I will have to say that the judgment of the selection of materials and design of what's been done to make all the entrances and access, you know, ADA compliant, I think has been really extremely tastefully done. Um, the new terrace with the ramping there, um, and even the fire <laughs> um, exit uh, from the second floor is really very tastefully done. I'm going to you know, compliment Tiger and his group for those decisions. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. So I, my recommendation is that stays in. Okay. Thank you. Uh, playground updates. We talked about at length. Dunning lights. We talked about Irwin boardwalk. Yes. Uh, Mm -hmm. Maria. On the playground, for you to put in the children's play set, do a lot of trees have to come down? He's, he's muted. Tiger's or, muted. Or, or the, um, uh, there's, there's only a couple that need to be, we're, we're trying to place it smack in the middle of that area. There isn't that many trees in the middle. Uh, I was out there again today to take a look at that and um, and look at the, the equipment again in the, in the entire area. So there are a couple, but we, we are trying to nestle it inside that grove of trees. So we're trying not to have, we're trying to minimize that impact um, and place it in the middle so that we, will, we, uh, we won't have any, any adverse impact to the, to the canopy there. And then the adult play set is being moved or ditched and a new one's coming in? It, well, we would have to, that, the, 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 the equipment is past its useful life. Um, so it needs to be removed. The, uh, um, it's, it, it's, it's at the point where as, as it, as it ages or as it ages out, we're just going to rip the pieces out. We're going to take a backhoe and rip them out and, and put them in the metals bin and recycle them. Uh, so the thought is that we're going to place the, the athletic facility, the adult athletic facility further to the east, closer to the road, and use that as a backdrop, as a catch for the children. So the playground will be in the front, closer to the play area, closer to the play, um, playing fields. So the kids will run to the playground first and not go to the adult fitness area. And also that'll catch, you know, will stop them from going any further, say to cross the road into other areas of the parks so in case, uh, you know, a parent is inattentive at a time. Um, so that's the thought is to use the adult fitness area in the back, the children's play area in the front as a draw, right? They'll go to the children's play area. And then if you wanted to go to the adult fitness area, the adult is patient enough to walk to the back to go to that area. I'm, I'm thinking in a way that this playground is, uh, what do they call it? Um, a nuisance when, when something attractive, is attractive, attractive nuisance. nuisance for like, I'm not even sure putting a playground in there will keep kids off. They'll go towards it. Does it need fencing? I mean, yeah, absolutely that, needs fencing. I'm wondering if we 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 plan to fence the adult fitness area 
so that the you know the children won't be able to get in you know or at least it'll be a little bit more difficult for them to get in will it be an, it still be an attractive nuisance to a degree but they'll have a place to play where you know and it'll have more appropriate things to play on that'll probably be a little bit more you know of what they're what they would like to play on or you know what they would like to do versus trying to uh, create play on a on a fitness on a piece of fitness equipment it's not the same you know to go running in place on a piece of fitness equipment that is like an elliptical machine versus them actually running up and down a playscape or playing on a playscape so and that's the reason why we're putting the children's play area in the front not in the back so that they can actually get to it first and then you know and, and avoid going further into the into the play area where do teenagers play i'm kind of joking it's but the, it's, it's like a, it's a little bit confusing. Well, the teenagers, it, it, the teenagers are considered a young adult, so they could be in the adult fitness area. And playgrounds are not necessarily designed for teenagers. They're designed for somewhere on the ages of five to 12 year olds, right? Or then, you know, your two to four year old range in your, in your toddler area. But playgrounds specifically are for the five to 12 range and possibly a little bit younger. Teenagers themselves, you know, they might go and play on it, but I don't, I don't think that they're attracted to it. They don't thank want to you, be thank around you. adults anyway, so. Thank you, Tiger. Uh, Rita. So I want to preface my question. I have a question, but I want to preface it with by saying I, I personally think it makes sense to replace the adult fitness center because of safety reasons. And I'm also in support of putting in a playground. So I want to put, put that out there. Uh, so my question is, in terms of how you were deciding, like, if you were deciding tomorrow, like it, starting from scratch, say, um, that you were going to put in a adult fitness center and you were going to put in a playground. Would you put them to like, you know, starting from scratch, would you be putting them in there together? Is that the most ideal spot? Is that the right spot for the playground? That's, that's my question. Like, I know you, I know you said that it, it's a backstop so that when people are, when kids are thinking that it would be fun to go to the <laughs> adult fitness center, they could go to the playground. Is, is that intentional or is it make, would it make sense to put the playground somewhere else? That's my question. We did look at that. That's why the reasons why you know, we, the project got deferred from last year mm -hmm. was to, to go and look, go back to Park and Rec and have them look at other areas right. throughout Waveney and see if there was another area yes. that would be better. And there isn't the best place because where the majority of the kids are congregating are right there. We looked at an area near the pool. We looked at areas further, further away. Um, the because problem is you get into two right? fields on one side, you've got the turf, you've got the, you've got the pool, you have the paddle, you have the um, Spencer's mm -hmm. run, and then you have the middle. So, and then the middle is all playing fields, stay away from the playing fields. You're, you're back to exactly where you started, which is in the middle, in the middle, you know, where, where we're proposing. So that, I mean, that's what you've answered my question. So you've done the due diligence and it makes sense for not just, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't just for convenience sake, but this is well thought out where you decided it would make the most sense to put both of those. That's, that's that was that, yeah, that park and rec went and spent, spent, you know, the time to go out and look, they had a subcommittee that went out and looked yeah. and came back to the area where we had already, where we had started with. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Right. Thank you. Luke. Yeah, so when we say, uh, and I do budgets on a frequent basis, it, it's part of my every day. Um, when we say it's past its useful life, uh, who's quantifying or qualifying that it's past its useful life? And uh, and again, I'm a thousand percent. I, I, I love Waveney and I use it often and me and my children use it often and probably kids that are not appropriately should be using that part of the park are there. Um, they seem very happy, but we want everyone to be healthy and safe. Um, but when we say like, it, everything's past its useful life. Well, then why is it still in use, right? Why is it still there? And what are the checks and balances that we're holding ourselves accountable for that, like right now it's like, hey, we need this and it's past its useful life and we're just gonna have to start ripping everything out. Okay, I understand that, but how did, it's 2022. How do we get to this point that our equipment is now, 
an obstacle, an issue in Waveney when it's one of our, you know, our gems in the town that yes, we want to do this, or I think a majority of people want to do this. What is the process and procedure of holding ourselves accountable that now we're already past our useful life and there's an issue here, we need to rip it all out. And if not, if we don't approve this new parks, then we need to just start tearing everything out. Well, then why wouldn't that be in effect much prior to this conversation? Luke Tiger answered that last time, okay? Playgrounds, play areas are, are liability issues for towns. It goes, so it's so we bring in equipment and other things. We bring in an independent consultant, happen. right? Last year, this was in the budget and it was deferred. We can't continue to defer the replacement of the 10 year old, 12 year old. How old is a tiger? It's 10 years old. 10 years old. I mean, these things wear out, right? And because, Understood all equipment wears out, Kevin. Right. But I think there yeah. should be an accountability in a third party vendor. There, there is. Tiger explained it last <laughs> time. So we yeah, hired consultant. Come out and take a look. Right. They, they evaluate it right last they, year. And, so he's, then, and he told us basically it's time. Now we're one year past time. Same thing with the turf fields, right? They, they have to be tested. And at a certain point, you have to replace them because they, well, they we're at the turf fields. Right. Yes. But so then it's, it's, my point is, is there a mechanism that if we're a year past when the use we, like we have to do the at least replace the current one? <laughs> And if you want to we're discard the playground, I'm saying yeah. that the process and procedure to get to this point, you're talking about what the cure is. I'm I'm a hundred percent in agreement on the cure. I'm saying that okay, then we do this. We do the cure. Parks, Parks and Rec brought forward this last year's budget, and it was deferred. You can't but defer it again. Kevin, his 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 comment is: if we have already identified that it is past its prime, right. why sh why is it still in existence? It should exactly it should be out of use <laughs> if we have already identified it as past its prime. I'm, I'm it actually is a liability. I'm, I'm saying that <clears throat> if it's an issue, then I'm not saying I'm against. I'm, I'm super excited. supportive of this. Okay, what I'm saying is. I'm long-term, I'm a long-term objective is that, okay, then we get all the new equipment or whatever parks and everything and Tiger, you've done an absolutely fantastic job at everything. I'm saying, then what happens 10 years from now? And then it's like, oh, we're, we're a year past. Why not have a process, a procedure that puts in place that we're testing or being accountable? Say we have a third party. Like the airlines, right? They have scheduled replacement, even if it doesn't, you know, they don't expect it. They say, this is good. we don't operate that way, right? 10 years, you start looking at it closely. All right, why yeah, not do so. it year eight and a half and then <laughs> test it and say, is it still working? Well, that's Tiger's we, we have a consultant that comes out every year. And this past time, a year ago, hence, we asked him, hey, we're having problems with the play surface, and we would like to upgrade the play surface, right? The thought originally was just to upgrade the play surface, put in a port in place surface similar to Mead Park because we have a problem with freezing and thawing. We have a problem with maintenance of just the, the wood chips and accessibility getting in and around on that area, especially since it was originally designed for people with uh, disabilities. So we asked him that question. He said, it's not worth it with this equipment. This equipment is basically past its useful life. If you're gonna go do that, get rid of it and bring in everything new. You're gonna come in with a port and place services. So that was last year. We said, okay, we wanna come in and upgrade everything at this point in time take everything out because it's basically past its useful life. It's getting to the point. He didn't say anything was unsafe so that we had to take anything out. He said, you're not going to be able to get parts for anything. So as they break down at that point in time, we're going to have to remove them. So as looking at an entire response that not say that, so then you Tiger, you just said something different than you said, what you said, he answered me, which I don't think it was a full answer, Kevin. That is the answer that says it was not harmful for the people that are using it, which is not saying that it's past its useful life. It's saying it's not, it's not in the purpose of its intended use, okay, that we should upgrade and we have a new appropriate structure that we'd like to reconfigure. That's different. So I think people- Tiger start... said past his useful life and he also just qualified in terms of how he, he said anyway, I always defer to Tiger. So. All right, let's 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 move on from that. Sorry, Hillary's hands up. Oh, Hillary. No, I was just gonna ask if we could move on. Yes. I think that we've covered- Can I just, um, can I just I have to throw one word in here. Okay. Why do things last longer in town than they should? Government. <laughs> <laughs> Like conversations. Or Steve, I, I'm trying to equipment. prevent this same situation on a go forward basis. Yeah, I, that's what my why are we tying? Why are we tying Steve, replacement yeah. of the of the, the the equipment which needs to be replaced? And I get it. 
But it seems, unless I'm getting this wrong, but then we're expanding it, though, to include a children's playground to kind of offset the risk that the children are going on to the adult playground, uh, adult fitness facility. So that to me is, is an issue, right? I get the safety concerns, but so you're addressing the safety concern in two ways by one, having new equipment and providing something shiny over here so we can kind of stay over there. So spend all this extra money for that. And this goes down to my a, a broader point. There is not a compelling town interest in putting in a children's playground at Waveney. I disagree. Sorry. I disagree. I, I disagree. totally disagree. You know, you, you guys see it and, and there's people wanting to use it, but this is to me is one of those issues that like, if we can't even throttle back on this particular issue, then we can't throttle back on anything. That's my concern. And if the safety concern was really that issue, and I, I believe it to be a present concerning issue, then move it away completely from where the children would be, have signs like real signage, real fencing, and say, don't go in there. So, but to now say, well, well we got to throw in this extra uh, children's playground. It's just, again, it's one of those things where we, you know, turn to the school board, right? And we're saying, well, you know, some of us are saying, well, this is it, you know, the planetarium, we're kind of concerned about the price on that. Well, maybe if we weren't like, we've got to do this safety play, this kid's playground on Waving, maybe that's, better allocated dollars towards the planetarium and, and, and look at it that way. Not just look, we want this, so let's do it. We want this, so let's just do it. It's just a broader point. And maybe there isn't, you know, a, a desire to have a, a children's playground, but a compelling need is very different than a desire to have a playground. If the safety is the issue, then to me, it just then completely separate them, put them in opposite sides of the park. Uh, and I'll, I'd be happy to fund both, uh, you know, say, okay, I think it's the right thing to do. But there's a blurring of the lines here. No. Desire versus a compelling need. And there's this issue of there's a safety concern. So I offset can't. the safety concern by expanding so it into scared. a larger project. That's the, the, a, a broader concern that I have with the town spending, our bonding, and all of the dollars that we have to continue to spend. And like Todd Lavier Lavieri said, we like nice things. Okay, so fine. If that's what it is, then let's all be honest and say, look, we're not interested in cutting projects. There's always a desire. There's always a desire that can be articulated. There's always a need that can be articulated. That's just, again, it's a broader point about our process that, that, that concerns me. Thank you. Hillary. Um, I appreciate that, Mike. I think the broader, A, you can have safety concerns, and a compelling desire. This is our largest park. There are kids playing there all the time, watching siblings play. Look at this picture of children, a massive amount of children after the color drop playing on that equipment. It's how many kids were there, Tiger? 75, 100? I look at that and I, I mean, it's a magnet for them. And to say we don't need a playground in our largest park, I mean, where, where you've got kids playing all the time. You know, you can't separate families. It's not like go to Mead and play at that playground. Not when their older brother and sister are playing baseball or football or whatever at Waveney. It's just not, it, it doesn't work. I think it, I think this really cries out for a playground. And, and in a more general sense, I mean, I'm just gonna go and say it because now we're running at like 8.30. I support all these projects for a number of reasons. I think it doesn't make sense to push them off for another year. I agree that if we're going to, we either do them or we don't. Pushing them off for another year makes absolutely no sense. It's, it's all optics to do that, just to say that we cut something or did something. Um, I think there is a compelling need for this. I think the planetarium is a great project for our town. I think it's a great for our community, not just our schools. I know now, and I'm sorry to step on your toes, Robin, but like staying put goes there. Um, Toddler time, other, you know, I mentioned that, that my child went there when she was in preschool, it serviced K through 12. It services our whole community. I really support all these projects and I don't think that cutting any of them is gonna make a material difference in our mill rate. I think it's just optics. And I don't, unless we're gonna take a huge chunk out of our operating or our capital budget that would really make a difference to the mill rate to people, we can talk about that, but cutting these little projects or pushing them off by a year just so we can say we did it, 
I don't think really? is that meaningful. No and one's I think, saying that, Hillary. And I listen. I, I, can I finish? I'm sorry. Excuse me. I'm speaking. I just don't think that it's meaningful. And I think that we run into the same problems that we've had. I mean, like I said, it's been six years that I've been listening about this elevator at Waveney. And this is what happens. Things get pushed off for a year and then another, and then there's another project that's a priority. Let's get this stuff done, guys. It's not, you know, moving these projects isn't gonna move the needle on our mill rate. It really isn't. So what are we trying to accomplish? What is cutting the boardwalk at Irwin going to accomplish? What is having that boardwalk going to accomplish for our taxpayers? It's going to be really great. It's going to be really nice. And it's $175,000. So I just, that's my perspective. I think that these are worthy projects for our community. I think moving them for another year doesn't solve the problem that we all would like to solve. I think our board of finance did an amazing job. We've had four years of three or four years of no mill rate increases, which is unbelievable. And we have a bump this year, which is understandable, frankly. So that's kind of where I stand on this. And, you know, I hope that you can all join me. I think nitpicking at this point is, you know, is not going to make a huge difference. And it's just going to push this and kick it down the road, like Mark has said, to what end? To what end? Um, so, uh, you know, I support this budget the way it is, and I would hope that the rest of you would too, for, you know, the number of reasons that I've, that I've outlined. And now I'm going to blow my nose. Thank you. Thank you. It also should be said, you know, we've become the regional park, right? And we have a lot of kids on weekends from out of town. So, you know, and you can't have unsafe equipment. You know, one, one accident will cost us a million dollars. So. I'm not suggesting that. I said it has to be yeah. replaced, it gets replaced. I'm not against that. Christina. I, I like to say, um, Tiger, that based on what you commented at the last meeting, that a child had been injured in this adult playground, um, I went there and I visited, and I was really shocked because I find the equipment to be very dangerous for children. And I was surprised that the area was not fenced in and that people were still allowed to use it. The signage does not say really clearly, no children allowed. And to not have a gated area really puts everybody in peril. Thank you. Uh, Rita first. Yeah, so, um, so Mike, I, I, I actually agree with you in terms of decoupling these two issues, which is one is safety and one is the playground. I, Gotcha. And I, and I, I mean, I had a conversation with um, Steve today about having, you know, establishing criteria for when projects, capital expenditure projects come to us. And maybe, you know, there are guidelines that we consider when we're approving it. I said that given the list that we have, I feel like they are all pretty reasonable. Um, and in terms of the playground, I think we can make, I can make a really good case for having a playground apart from the whole safety issue. So, I mean, we can have that discussion if you want, but I, I, I think regardless, uh, it, it's a way we can, you know, we could do it more cost-effectively this way. We can solve for the safety issue and we can solve for having a playground for all of these many, like the, all the many families that have moved to this community with small children, the fact that it's our largest park, the fact that there are so many games that are going on and um, you have younger siblings running around. Like it, to me, it just makes sense to do both, but I agree there are two different objectives here. And if, if you wanna look at it that way, I agree with both objectives. Thank you, Robin. Yeah. Uh, Tiger, actually, I have a question for you. If uh, the reason why the playground and the fitness center would be next to each other because they're going to use the same like matting, right? Yes. Yeah. Same so that's money. Having, right. So it's safe. So it's saving money, and then in the plan, it does call for fencing to go around the fitness center, right? That's correct. Yeah. The, right. the thought is there would be one continuous pour not two mobilizations, not two separate sets of work. Uh, so, there'll be, so there'll definitely be a cost savings doing it as one piece. And then, yeah, we're gonna try to close off the adult fitness area from the children's play area to prevent it, you know, random access. 
Right. So if we have to do the adult anyway, in, to, to do it all together at once, we would save the town money rather than trying to do two separate, put it off one part for a year or two. Correct. Okay. Thanks. You have a question about Erwin? Sure. Mike. So, Tiger, just a question. I recall from our past presentation the people that came and spoke, someone said something about we need netting to be put up, um, screening. Do you recall that being said? So is that screening a part of the 175 that we have budgeted or is that an additional cost? And if so, how much was that, what's the cost? Uh, it wasn't factored into the original cost since that was a comment that came in um, after. And I do believe that there'll be some fundraising associated with that. Even the, even the from what I understand that the resident who requested the screening also um, suggested that they would be willing to contribute. Um, I don't have a number off the top of my head. Normally, uh, we we go in, we'll put the project in, take a look at where we need to screen. We have an idea from beforehand. This one, I don't necessarily have an idea. I haven't been able to go out and see that resident's concerns. I've seen I've seen the the views to to the to the west, uh, but I haven't necessarily seen the views to the south or the southwest to see what those concerns would be. So I don't have a number off the top of my head. I, I don't believe it would be that cost prohibitive though. Right, but the good good thing, it sounds like it's going to be offset, at least in some part, by private money. That's correct. That That is the goal. Right. Okay. Thank you. All right, so uh, it is going to be 830. So here's, here's, here's what we're going to do. Hillary's already weighed in supporting all of the projects. I'm going to move to Robin, and then we're going to go around the room and just get a sense of where everybody is. So Robin, you've got the floor. We have a long time to the practice. Oh, do you want to do you want to talk more about these? But don't you? I mean, what, so I mean, kind of going through them one by all one. All right. So, all right. So, Irwin, we you missed you were on the Irwin Park uh, uh, conversation. You want yes. to talk about that now? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So, we'll spend two minutes on Irwin Park. <laughs> can, can I? Can we? Just in case we yeah. go to the bottom of the list so that uh, uh, board of ed can go. Yeah. All right. So that that's that's fair. All right. So, uh, does anybody want to talk about either the Innovation Center or the Planetarium? We've talked at length about that, but does anybody? Okay, as I as I spoke um, at the other meeting, I have a little bit of a problem with the planetarium, given the fifteen million dollar ast astronomy uh, center that is being developed right in our backyard, um, which is going to be including virtual programming to suburban uh, surrounding schools. So it's not just um, an a visit to the planetarium. It's going to be, you know, their program is going to be beamed out to all the schools because not every school can have a planetarium. Uh, I just think it's <clears throat> perhaps monies that um, is a nice to have, but given what's that's going to be built literally in our backyard, um, not an essential thing to have. Sorry. Okay. Never, I think everybody else had a, had a chance to comment on the planetarium. Oh, Maria? Just one, well, I might as well combine the two, yeah. the innovation. The only problem I have with the innovation center is it's too unknown. I don't know, what does it mean? Is it carpets? Is it walls? Is it counters? So to me, I don't know what, and you have it going across the board. So, you know, over the next couple of years and, um, you know, are we sure? They are capital items. I don't know. I just don't know. I don't have enough detail on that. So I have a problem with that. No one else does. So it's probably going to be fine. But um, the planetarium, I love the idea, you know, and I'm wondering, um, and I just found out about the actual amount of the ARPA money. Is that something we can suggest that you fund through ARPA money since it's technology? Just a thought. And I don't, I don't feel that um, this, I, I find it hard to believe 350 is actually enough to get it done. Well, so, that so that's a portion of, they're going to privately fundraise the rest right. of it. So, so, so what's the whole, you know, it's, and that's again, why, it's that's the why it's only, you know, it's a project that we're getting into and there's just a lot of unknowns. The way I look at that one is we're getting a, basically a half price, almost planetarium. You know, if you get private funding that comes in, that, that'll augment that it's, Anytime we do private public 
partnerships, it's a, it's a good thing. I understand there's a concern about not knowing exactly what the cost is going to be, but uh, I haven't spoken to anybody in town that doesn't like the idea of doing the planetarium. I, I, you know, I've, I, everybody that I've ever mentioned it to says, hey, you know, we've got to do it. It's a good idea. And the fact that there's private money coming in makes it even better. So by the time um, you get a bond resolution. Yeah. Horrible. Right. Yeah. Right. So we'll, we'll have another conversation about it. You know, Brian's offered to have field trips over there. Um, he's offered to, you know, open it up when it gets done to the public. We already talked earlier about how many people in town are going to be affected by it. We talked at the last meeting about cost of transporting K through 12 to, uh, you know, a center. And I get Penny's point. That's a, it's a, it's a great point. And there's certainly uh, some validity to it, but when you look at busing all of our students over there, um, you know, there's costs associated with that too. And, and, and downtime for the kids in terms of learning. So that's, that's why I would, I would say that, that having it in-house makes a big deal um, and having it on the campus makes a big deal. And we also heard about how the building, the, the room would become sort of a storage closet if it's, it's, it's already fitted out for a planetarium. So there's a lot of reasons why it make, makes sense. And that's why I, you know, I, I'm 100% behind the, the idea, so. And a little bit, <clears throat> again, a problem with, you were saying how wonderful it is that we're having private funding and it is a wonderful concept. But once again, we're having private funding, you know, support government spending, but then we get to take care of it right. ongoing. So it's, it's a gift that keeps on giving from a government responsibility standpoint. But this, is, this isn't a new project, it's an existing project that you're renovating and upgrading. There's a difference. Yeah, and I mean, you can make that point, but then I, then I start looking around town and I look at Dunning Stadium, would you give that back? Would you give the fields back? Would you give, you know, you can go around and around, would you give the library back? You know, all of the things that, that private funding has bought over the years, would we really say, let's bring it back for a return? I mean, I, you know. No, I, my, I, my, my point is we, we have, have to be to, careful yeah. about the power of private funding, you know, with right. projects that we perhaps would not have done had it not been for private funding. The library? It's, it's rare. I, I it's, said it's something to be careful about. I'm not saying take the library off. Generally, uh, generally there. Yes, we have that comment that, that's made frequently. Private fundings, getting something that people want, some people want, but not necessarily on the list of things to do. So generally, you know, when you have, the, it's very rare where you have, like the pool is a good example where we put the pool in and, and uh, there was contingency uh, put aside for that. The, very rarely, and tonight's uh, uh, playground comes to mind as one issue that we put in privately that didn't have enough momentum behind it to keep it going from the, from the group that put it in. But, you know, most of these projects, the fields, the, you know, Dunning, all of these different uh, projects generally are sustainable long term. They do need to be, uh, you know, government funds need to be put in, but we, we would never be able to have them if we didn't have some of that private money coming. And I, I think the planetarium is going to be one of those things that we'll look back and say, I am really, really glad that we, we put that in. I really believe the programming, the educational side of it, it's all such a, it's a very positive project all the way around. So anyway, that's why I'm, that's why I would support it. And I would, and I would support it, uh, privately too. So I, I would be happy to give a donation. I know Todd and, and Bob Hamill stepped up and would said that they give a thousand dollars. I'll match their, uh, their donation. So, um, I'm, I'm behind it hundred percent. So, so Robin, you've got your hand up. I know we, we need to, we need to wrap this up because I promised everybody that we were going to get out of here and not keep everybody. We're already into this. We're into this for 15 hours already. So, um, uh, no, that was the hand was left up for before. All right. So, so does anybody else want to talk about innovation or or the planetarium? So, the board of ed can go home. Does anybody else have any? Just wrap up. Yeah, comments. and in your comments, you can say this, but having these discussions is we're just circling a wagon here. Yeah. So, yeah, you're gonna. That's that's why that's why you've got to vote. So, um, Hillary, I, like I said before, has voiced her support for all of the projects. <clears throat> Robin, you've got the floor. We're going to go around the room and just do it. It's not, we're not voting on these. We're just giving our, because next week is when we're voting. So. So I vote the same budget as is, as, as passed by the board of finance. I do want to add something real quick. Cause I know there are questions about um, the Dunning stadium lights for 450 um, and tiger. If you could help me here. I remember a couple of years ago at a meeting, 
Steve Banco said those lights, you couldn't just put LED bulbs in them. They needed um, to be replaced. And that we discussed in this meeting, Steve, I think you were there. This was about two years ago, more than two years ago, um, that the amount that the LEDs would cut in the electric use every year was like something like 60%. Tiger, is that accurate? Yeah, that's an accurate number. The so I remember in the meeting. We, we can't necessarily, we cannot replace the, the bulbs and we cannot replace the heads. Right. Uh, once we start touching, we've got to go all the way down to the, to the posts and the stanchions um, because they don't meet code, right? Uh, and then there would be a substantial savings on the electrical side of about 60, 65% changing over from what we have at present, those types of lights to, uh, to an LED. And if I recall, it was something like, Am I getting this? Was it like eighty thousand dollars a year in electric for Dunning or something? No, we, the, Maybe the estimate at present is, is a twist twenty three thousand dollars. The uh, okay, the, uh, I think that then, was uh, the meeting included. <laughs> right, and then we're also looking at. Thank you, Joanne, for that comment. The um, uh, we're putting in solar, so solar is going to actually help bring that cost down to the point where we might necessarily the lights would be um, off the grid. So to speak, with the with the additional lights that are going to go on to the gym, uh, the solar that's going to go on to the gym, um, that's going to be on the on the meter that's that's uh, for the lights themselves. So we might even with with the reduction in LED and then the adding of the solar, we might be able to bring that bring that down even further. All right, thank you. You're uh, that's it for me, Steve. Thank you, Rob. All right, so uh, we're going to go down to Rita. Rita, you're up next. I am in support of all of the items on the list. Thank you. Luke? Uh, one, uh, I might have been controversial on so, some comments, just uh, quantifying how we land at the decision making, but I am 100% in support of everything that's presented tonight. Thank you. Uh, Maria? Um, I, and I just want to say that I think, you know, by asking questions and discussing and digging in, I don't think it's just going in circles. I really think. I'm trying to represent, yeah. you know, people have said things, they, some people don't think, you know, doing a planetarium is a good idea. And I think we have to bring these issues up and, you know, a little bit of the process when you look at, you know, how much debt we're taking on and, and bring it down to principal and interest. And it's only that I, I almost feel like when I first, when I got my first credit card and I could rationalize anything, cause it was only like <laughs> $20 a month. You know, I mean, I just, I feel like, I don't want to rationalize away things. I want to think them through. Yeah. And but you know, ultimately, I am supportive. I think everyone works really hard and puts a lot of thought into every everything. Everybody in the town is really thoughtful. So for that reason, I'm in. Thank you, Mike. I'm not so sure I support everything. I think that we have compelling needs versus nice enhancements to the town, and I have not been persuaded in the least of someone convincing me that certain of these things are just nothing more than nice enhancements. At the end of the day, we're spending taxpayer dollars. So just our personal opinions on certain items, I, it doesn't carry the day. It's walking out in the public saying, this is what I'm spending your money on, a need versus an enhancement. So because of that, you know, I think I support almost all of these projects, but I'm not sure I can support all of them. And I'll think about that and I'll, I'll talk to people out in the real world. Thank you, Mike. Christina. Um, I have to say, for the most part, I support, support most projects, but I do not support the design and execution or price for Waveney. So therefore, I'm abstaining or, or voting that down. As far as the other issues that I have is the process that's in place. I think we've gotten less and less information on projects, including plans or proposals. As an example is the playground, if it was deferred already a year, where are the plans? Why don't we have something to look at to agree that this is what it's going to be? I think that the process is flawed and I'm very disappointed. So are, you a, are you a no on the playground too or? No, no. I think the playground, the existing playground needs to be shut down immediately. Okay. So Tiger, just to follow up on Christina's point, can you make sure that we get a presentation on what the playground is going to look like before it goes in? Would you mind? Oh, you're muted. I'm sure you're going to go to park. You're going to go to park and rack, but yeah, we just want to. 
it'll go back it'll it'll come back and if you'd like to see exactly what we're proposing absolutely we'll bring it back it'll, it'll, it'll definitely go back to park and rec you know as we you know we, we necessarily we have a concept right but you don't get into the into the nuts and bolts of it again without we're asking we're asking contractors we're asking suppliers to come in and give us you know information and work on projects that necessarily haven't been funded and it's very difficult for them their time is their time is limited yeah. but as we go forward absolutely we'll, we'll be going back to park and rec and we can certainly come to the council and show you exactly what we're thinking gather some more more uh, input at that time i mean we've got we've got as a council we have a lot of work in at waveney and waveney grounds and everything and it, it, you know it stands to reason that we'd like to see it so it makes sense so thank you for accommodating no problem, no problem. i'm move over here to kim Oh, I thought I was going last. No. <laughs> <laughs> Save the best for last. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, my comments that I want to make are, I just want to talk big picture and then I'll get specific. Sure. But, um, you know, I consider it a huge responsibility to spend taxpayer money. And I do feel like we have to keep our eye on the ball of when you look at the uh, bonding and you look at the interest, it's, it's, you know, over five years, it's $20 million. So although everyone says spend now because it's going to get more expensive, I think that we have other things that might be coming down the pike, such as the 830G, you know, kind of crisis that we're in now when I've started to hear about how much it costs to build one affordable housing unit at $500,000, possibly the cost of acquiring land. I think about what is the next bonding going to be next year? I mean, how much are we going to have to spend? So I, I also want to address the process. I, I agree with um, what other people have said about the process being kind of backward. I don't really feel like I know hardly anything about any of these projects. I know I'm new on the town council, but I get the sense that a lot of people don't know. They don't have budgets. They don't have um, solid plans. And so I don't feel comfortable with that. Um, I, I do respect the process that the Board of Finance went through and all the work that's gone into it from all the people like Tiger who have done their budgets. So I, I do support a fair amount of the project. So I'm also going to think about it and talk to people in the community and I'll be ready on Tuesday night. Great. Thank you, Kim. Tom. Well, I certainly think just to underscore what we've said earlier that, that any of these that we're going to do soon, we should do now. So I'm definitely in that point. Uh, if we had criteria for uh, capital items, uh, and you were dis discussing some of them that, that we might uh, want to use, I think the one that would score the lowest, uh, probably at least on a, what I envision to be a theoretical set of rules, would be Irwin. Uh, the reason being that it's new. Um, we already have extensive trails there. Uh, it, it would be the hardest one to, to justify. But so, so I'd say I'm, I'm on the fence in that. If somebody wanted to put an argument together saying, let's Let's start a new methodology and actually consider, you know, if we studied that, should it be taken off the table? I'd be, I'd be open to that. The other ones I strongly support, um, and I'll, I'll probably don't know what I would do with Erwin. Thank you. Penny. Well, you heard about my concerns about Irwin. Um, as, as Tom was just saying, it is a brand new project that actually came in after the process had started. So since we've been having discussions about process, this project did not get viewed and opined, opined by the Board of Selectmen, which I find a little bit disturbing to bring in a project after the process has started. Uh, this is not something that is really, really, really important where, where you could justify, you know, skipping part of the process. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm really concerned about skipping the process. It is not on the five-year plan. This is brand new news. Uh, and I really consider it a nice to have. We have miles and miles and miles of <laughs> parks and sidewalks and trails all around um, our community. Um, and now that I've been hearing that neighbors are a little concerned about people walking so close to their properties, I think that is actually a concern. It would be my concern. Um, I live near the Five Mile River and it was discussed at one time to have the trail go right down the Five Mile River. And my first concern was my dogs are gonna go crazy and I don't like the fact that people are just walking so close. So uh, I, I will not be voting uh, for the Irwin Park um, uh, project. Um, 
and I, I mean, we're still paying for Irwin Park. Um, so to be asking the taxpayers to pay again, even more for a nice to have um, project, I can't justify. Um, I'm still on the fence uh, about uh, some of these other projects, particularly the planetarium. Um, Thank you. Okay. okay. Mark. Yeah. I mean, I kind of look back over the year and over the last two years on, on the town council and we've, we approve labor contracts, healthcare contracts embedded in there. We have a massive amount of fixed assets that we have to maintain. So, we, we, you know, now we have a list and I, I kind of put this into the goodwill category which is what we're talking about. And that's really what we struggle with. And I, and I agree with Mike and Kim, there should be a, a process at, at looking at some of these goodwill things because they're, they're nice to haves. But I also feel like, you know, a lot of people come before us and they, you know, there's always different groups that like these things. And, and this is goodwill and it goes a long way. Um, and it's not a lot of money. The, the, the big stuff we've already approved, the labor contracts, you know, maintenance has to be done. It's just inevitable stuff. Um, I appreciate the fact that some of these things don't make sense to some people. Um, they don't all make sense to me, but like I said, a little goodwill goes a long way with various contingencies within town. And I just don't think I am in a position to, you know, alienate one for my own personal viewpoint on, on it. So I probably would support all of these, but someone made a great compelling argument to go against it. That was really, really fiscally sound as opposed to kicking it down the road. I'm all for it. Thank you. Yeah. And I mean, that's why we had, and, 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 and Josh, thank you for the uh, slide uh, showing, you know, the impact. And, and I think it's, it, it we are going to wrap up here. It's, it's already 10 and nine. So, I appreciate everybody coming out and and uh, and and sort of boiling down to the last the last of the last. I I I agree with all the points about kicking this stuff down the road. I I, I for one am am not ready to to uh, vote anything down. I think the 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 process of that last Irwin project I agree with, um, but I can't take one thing and just single it out and say that's the one thing that we're going to cut because. We had so many neighbors and so many people coming here to support that project. I mean, it's it's like I said earlier, these are the retail side. This is the retail side of the budget. It's not the this is what people can touch and feel um, and see their tax dollars at work. They can't see, you know, internal service funds and and salaries and healthcare and all that. This is this is what people actually use every day. So that's why some the the numbers are not that big, and. Uh, it's it's things that people can use and will enjoy. So that's where I am. Unless somebody knocks me over in the next couple of days, um, I will be supporting all of these projects. So um, that's it for tonight. Anybody have any last words before we adjourn? Uh, thank you all for coming. Thank you to the Board of Ed. Always here. You guys are here right to the end. We'll probably see you next week too, I would imagine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. We need a motion to adjourn. So Move. Christina. Christina, second. Mike. All in favor. No, Mike's unanimous. Thank you, Zoomers. Thank you, Hillary. Thank you, Robin. Thank you. Tiger. And thank you very much. I